We are back. Hi. Girl Strength Index here. I'm Luke. This is Johnny. Is this is the start of our new bulking series. If you're not sure who or what we are, if you're new to the channel, uh, we are everything fitness and we are everything fun. We are one of those no bullshit. You stand? Yeah. No, yeah, bullshit. no bullshit. YouTube channels. We don't deal with fad workouts or fad diets. We are research based, evidence based knowledge. So we do all the work, Science. we condense it. Pass it to you guys, you go off, get gains. Simple. That's it. Simple to follow. Simple. So please subscribe and hit the notification bell because we need that support so we've got more channels out there like us. Indeed. So what's the plan today? Today, the new series today is actually on bulking. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for those of you who are starting out on your fitness gains, you want to get a bit more size, you want to you know, get a bit bigger, a bit leaner as well, uh, you won't get actually really that lean. Uh, and actually a prerequisite to bulking is, if you are below 20% body fat, we would recommend that you can bulk. However, if you are high adipose tissue, high in fat, we recommend that you actually go on a calorie deficit, uh, which we have done a video on that. Yep, it'll be up there in the YouTube sphere. Yes, it's a, um, look, a whole nutrition playlist for you, so go through all those videos, have a look. It's on you know, healthy eating, calorie deficit, the works. Absolutely. So. Today we're going to go over five simple points, science-based evidence points, I might add, mm -hmm. uh, all based on studies by Dr. Brad Schoenfeld. This is a meta-analysis of studies that's been put together, especially just for you. Okay. So we'll get into the five points right now. Let's do it. <laughs> Science ninja. Right, point number one. Number one. Calorie intake. So calorie intake will differ person to person, but for beginners, Research shown it's up to well, 1,000 to 2,000 calories in a surplus per day. Um, and for the trained athletes, you're looking at anywhere between 500 to 1,000 calories per day in a surplus. Excellent. The energy balance does want to be much higher as dietary requirements in a calorie maintenance or calorie deficit is actually bad or poor for muscle growth and actually can actually produce actual muscle drop. So the best way to be is in the calorie surplus. Mm -hmm. uh, however, obviously this is based on averages. So the average male is 2,500 calories per day. This is based on an average five foot 10 male who's around about 13 stone. Uh, if you are not that, get a basis of average by doing a basal, uh, basal metabolic rate calculator, <laughs> BOR calculator basically. Um, if you have a general basis, go off that and then accommodate slightly as per requirements of your lifestyle i.e. job, what you do, how, many, how much you move per day and how much you exercise per week. Point two, protein intake. So we are looking at, but across the board, based on research, the best intake of protein is 1.7 to 2 grams per kilogram of body weight per day. So for a human male, that is 13 stone, that would be anywhere between 140 grams to so 165 grams of protein per day. We recommend starting at the lower end. If you feel like you're not getting enough gains after four to five weeks, start nudging it up until you get to that ample uh, protein intake. If you are getting then getting the shit, so you're eating too much. So, yes. so if you've got the average bro in the gym saying 300 grams of protein per day, 900 million calories per day, they don't know what that Jeff they're talking about. Um, and of course, it's actually, if you have too much protein, it actually can be detrimental to protein synthesis in the body. In other words, muscle don't grow, bitches. So, in other words, get the good requirements of the average base, but yet remember, these are based on a meta-analysis of studies. Mm -hmm. So they are correct to most points. However, some people need slightly less, some people need slightly more than the averages because yeah. we're not all based on averages. Ours, we are individuals. So that's Individual. point two, bitches. I've got to stop saying bitches. Stop Sorry, saying bitches. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Point number three, three, three. three. Carbohydrates. Brohydrates. Carbohydrates. Uh, so the number of carbohydrates we're looking to get in on a daily basis is three grams of carbohydrates per kilogram of weight. So there are a few types of carbohydrates you're looking at, and we're looking to get the best quality carbs we can. So two types, we're looking at the slow burning complex carbohydrates, which is weird shaped potatoes. 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 Sorry. <laughs> Weird shaped potatoes, these keep give you that energy throughout the day and make up a bulk of your carbohydrates. And the other type is those simple carbohydrates. So these are for your quick sources of energy, 
So before a workout, you go back in, you need a bit of a boost. Obviously, we prefer you to go for the healthier option, mm -hmm. but a little tiny bit of this every now and again is not gonna do you over. But just try and steer more towards the healthier carbohydrates. It's the simpler form of carbohydrate, so it's something you can get. Yeah. Like, for instance, a banana is the best thing to have maybe before exercise, especially if you're lacking energy. Uh, much better than chocolate because of obviously insulin spikes. Insulin spikes mm. are when you might get a big rush of energy, but then just as quickly as it comes, it drops you right back down. And of course, too many simple carbohydrates like that actually can be detrimental to your gains as well. Uh, of course, because it can put you in a next calorie surplus of too many calories, yet yeah, again, if you consume too much chocolate. So for those of you balkers who just kind of like, you know, want to take it a little bit easy <laughs> on their, their dietary requirements of calorie intake, maybe just check it a little bit from time to time yeah. to make Classic. sure you're not over consuming, because we've all done it, haven't yeah. we? Classic dirty bulk. Dirty bulk. Yes, we're talking about clean bulk in here, guys. Mm. Mm -hmm. There is no other kind. <laughs> all right. Number four. <laughs> okay, so we're going into fats now. So you've already done carbs, you've already done proteins. The rest of your dietary requirements in your calorie range should come from fats around about 1.6 grams per kilogram of body weight. So it's very similar to proteins in that uptake. Carbohydrates always take up a higher volume of your calorie intake. Uh, the best type of actual fats you can have are omega-3, which you can find in sources of salmon and other oily fish. Oily fish. Oily fish. If you're not a fan of fish or a uh, vegan, then it's absolutely fine. You can go to other sources to get that, that those fats. So looking at seeds, um, avocados, things like that. We do recommend just getting a wide variety of sources so you can maximize potential. Um, because it's hard to get all of the, the fats you need in one source. So try and spread it out as much as you can. Yeah, barbecue sauce, brown sauce, red sauce, mayonnaise. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. But yes, no, a variety of foods is best. Okay, that's it. What was it? Five. Five. Food intake times and things. And things and this and that. We recommend you eat two to three meals per day, five to six hours apart. Um, so the reason for this, it reduces the uh, chance of insulin spikes, which is detrimental to muscle gain. So keeping those meals, um, healthy portions, two to three times per day, spreading your calories out as you feel necessary. Absolutely. Remember, this is based on a meta-analysis of scientific-based evidence. So yeah, again, there's bro builders in the gym who say eat 10 meals a day, uh, just keep constantly eating. Doesn't matter how bloated you get, just get through it is completely irrelevant. You should not listen to those bro builders. And also big companies like this, you know, USN, maybe not these guys, but quite a lot of protein uh, supplement companies will recommend that you actually get your protein directly before or after a workout. Yeah. And it's actually not true. The only time that you should actually uh, get it directly after a workout is if you're in a fasted state for best hypertrophic uh, responses for the body to get the most muscle mass of building those muscles up. Um, is the reason being why people should have it after a fasted state is because they have no bloody energy in them. <laughs> yes. And they need the food requirements, simple as. Simple pimples. Bonus round. Bonus round. Bonus round. Bye. We, based on our recommendations, uh, this isn't based on facts or research, this is just our facts. We recommend finding a plan, creating it and sticking to it for 12 to 16 weeks so you know it works or doesn't work. Uh, we also recommend keeping track of your progress, i.e. progress pictures, measurements, scales, you know, weight lifting, whatever you feel you want to work on the most, then get a method of tracking it and stick to it. Thirdly, we also recommend taking a little bit of a break. Every three or four weeks, have a week where you're just having maintenance calorie intake mm. and just reduce the weight lifting down a little bit, just give your body and your stomach a chance to rest and recover. Yeah, so yes. uh, basically, yeah, it, it, after a certain period of time, your stomach, any energy balance, whether it's too high or too low, eventually will have a tipping point where it starts to go against you, it will become detrimental. So in other words, uh, you know, keep bulking, but be careful not to overbulk as well, because that's also something that a lot of people do. Uh, they'll eat, let's say, vast amounts of calories. So let's say the average 3,000 calories is a pound of body weight. And I say pound of body weight, I don't mean muscle. So if you're putting on three pounds per week, for instance, that's far too much. 
maybe just like a calorie deficit of one to two pounds per week mm. is, is quite good. If you get about 10 pounds of weight gain on an untrained person, a majority of that will probably be fat-free mass, and that will probably be like nine pounds, eight pounds of that will be muscle mass. However, a well-trained person should actually climb a little bit slower. So if you're a well-trained person, maybe even just one pound of body, uh, body weight per week, so that's 3,000 3, calories surplus per week. Uh, so maybe 500 calories per day might actually be a little bit too much. However, this is based on the individual yet again. So if you guys are bulking, don't listen to the bros, listen to the... And that is about all we've got time for on this particular episode. Oh yes, 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 yes. If you like this video guys, make sure you are subscribing and you're hitting that notification bell so you don't miss out on all the content that's coming out. So we've got my 30 day ab routines going on every single day. So make sure you're following up from day one. On Friday, we've got a pull up video coming out. My world record pull up ascension will be coming out on Friday. Every couple of weeks, I'll just be giving you an update of my progress, which is fantastic. <laughs> And then on Wednesday next week, we're going to add on to our bulking uh, series, which is going to be on working out in the gym. Indeed. Indeed, you do. Get it as big as possible on our bulking cycle, essentially. And we'll be going over the do's and don'ts of what to do. Do's and don'ts of what to do. Do do. So adding what we've done today and nutrition, adding to the workout next week, and you'll be bulkier than bulkiest. Bulkier than bulkiness. Bulkiness. Compate, compate. Share, share. Share, share.